I saw a poll recently that said 92% of Americans believe in God, and a majority think religion plays too small a role. I don't remember if it was in their lives or people's lives in general, but you get the point. And I read this quote in your book that made me think of that. You wrote, I see a growing polarization in our society. Two opposing worldviews account for this polarization. One puts man at the center. The other puts God at the center. The two are absolutely irreconcilable. Here's the bottom line. One worldview will prevail. Which is winning? Uh, in, in some cases, as far as like, I think in the world of entertainment, it's, it's the man-centered view. Um, but I think out there in, in the hearts and minds of a lot of Americans, there's still a moral center that says that, uh, as our founding fathers believed, that there is a natural law that supersedes all the laws that man makes. And that natural law comes from the fact that there is a God who has created us with an innate understanding that some things are just wrong. It's wrong to murder somebody. It's wrong to lie. It's wrong to steal. Yes, those are laws we have in written form, but there's something inherent in us that tell us, even without being told, there's something that tells us that that's wrong. That sense of natural law is what uh, I think affirms that there must be a God who has put that uh, magnet in our lives that draws us that way. And there seems to be a bit, I don't know if the word would be frustration, in that people aren't living that enough. In fact, you wrote that you went into politics in part because your congregation was looking not for, let me, let me quote uh, it correctly, yeah. I thought the congregation expected me to be the captain of a warship leading God's troops into battle to change the world. As the years passed, I became increasingly convinced that most people wanted me to be the captain of the love boat, making sure everyone had a good time. Yeah, I, I think we've become so obsessed with, with ourselves, with our own sense of self-comfort, with our sense of ease and pleasure, that we've forgotten that the greatest thing we can do as human beings is not so much to hoard some benefit for ourselves, but is to be people who give, who share, who accept responsibility, not just for our own well-being, but for the well-being of somebody else. Where the rubber meets the road in taking your Christian values into issues that affect Americans. There are a couple places where you, you differ with large swaths, if not a majority, but a lot of people. And one thing that's got a lot of attention is your seeming rejection of evolution. And I wonder, you, you've said that you're not, you don't want to write um, an eighth grade science right. curriculum. But in your judgment, does the scientific community basically think evolution is true, or do you think there's debate on that? Uh, I think that there's probably overwhelming consensus in the scientific community that it's true. And, and let me clarify. My point has been that I believe God is at the center of creation. How he did it, when he did it, and how long it took, I simply don't know. Francis Collins, for example, well, uh, who's well, the head of the Genome Project, I was just okay, going to mention. Okay, he, sure, he, go ahead. He wrote, a, I think, a remarkable book called uh, The Language of God. Uh, he's the head of the Genome Project. But he's also a very committed evangelical Christian. He believes strongly in evolution, and he believes that it's completely compatible to be a Bible-believing evangelical Christian and to be an evolutionist. But you I don't, don't, right? I, my point is, I'm okay with him. I'm fine. I thought his book was great. I was very, very enlightening. Uh, I believe God created it. It doesn't have to be a certain type of creation in, 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 in this manner for me to somehow believe that that validated or invalidated God's uh, authorship of it. That's what's important to me. And so this whole thing came a as a result of the debate in which we were asked, well, lift your hands. Well, in a lift your hand kind of environment, I think what we're being asked, do you believe it's a natural thing or is it a God-centered thing? Did it just happen as the result of what I call completely um, accidental biological processes? Or was there a dynamic hand of a creative God in this process? That's where I want to be real clear. I believe it was absolutely uh, a dynamic, creative uh, process of God. And your further explanation at a later debate made it clear that you believe they're mutually exclusive and that you answered, you raised your hand as you did because you thought favoring evolution or supporting evolution denies God. It's, no, supporting uh, evolution as, uh, in, in the sense of Darwinism, pure Darwinism, which says that everything is getting better and better and better. If that's the case, then why worry about global warming? If global warming is the natural result of a planet we live on, then we should embrace it, accept it, and say, celebrate it, because it's just the way things are going to be. 
See, to me, the inconsistency is not with my position. The inconsistency is with those who say they believe in this completely natural process, let you know the survival of the fittest take place, and then they turn around and say, but we've got to do something about global warming. The planet's in trouble, and we've got to fix it. Wait a minute. Which is it? That those doesn't are, make those sense Those are mutually me. exclusive? You can't believe in evolution and global warming? No, no, no. I'm, what I'm saying is if you believe that the world is getting better and better, which is the basic premise of natural selection and evolution, and, and, and climate change or global warming is the result of the change in which uh, we're functioning, then we, rather than fight it, we would say, okay, this is the way it's going to be. Somebody's going to survive and somebody isn't. Well, the counterpoint would be that natural selection is a survival of the fittest, but if the fittest are too dumb huh. to protect their environment, maybe it doesn't matter how fit they are. Yeah. Okay, I, uh, <laughs> last thing. Um, you've said how much you love campaigning, that you don't have much in common with your fellow Hope Arkans and Bill Clinton, but one thing you both really like is campaigning. Hi, Riley. How are you? This is on such a different scale. Yeah. How have you found presidential campaigning? It's really a lot like campaigning for governor. You just do it in several states, and it's um, it's, it's like governor of New Hampshire, governor of Iowa. Yeah, it's like running for governor in about uh, you know 50 states, and particularly three all at one time. It's also a bigger challenge because there, there's a greater sense in which the national media focuses on things that really aren't critical to being president. I'm glad you brought this up because it was the last thing I wanted yeah. to ask. I loved seeing you play the bass last night. I was yeah. impressed that you played for a half hour and it wasn't a one song photo op. Yeah. But at the end of the day, it's a photo op that's going to put you in Newsweek where talking about health care probably won't. That must be frustrating. Sure it is. And it's also frustrating that national media wants to focus more on how much money have you got in the bank? Not, what kind of ideas have you got in the tank? Yeah. And I'm, I'm thinking, good heavens, do you really want a president who can raise money? I mean, he needs to be the head of the United Way. What we need is a president who has ideas that can help transform health care, our economy, our tax structure, uh, education. That's what matters. And just because a guy's got some wealthy friends on Wall Street, I'm not sure that's who I want to be my president. I want a guy who, who understands what it's like to live in the real world and who has some ideas about bringing people together to solve the problems we face. But it also, it is pretty cool to be able to play bass guitar. <laughs>